Good morning everybody, Cindy here with Pathways Homestead. Today I'm going to be harvesting the garden. Our little gardens are really rolling in the produce right now for as small as they are. And they're keeping up with Gary and I and we're able to preserve some stuff. We're going to be harvesting some herbs and we're going to be harvesting beets and see what else we have that's ready to harvest. So hide and watch. Come along with us. Let's go see. I'll start off with harvesting some beets. We harvested some of our beets here. The bonus of this is to get some of them out of the ground so that the other ones have room to grow. Um, we're just gonna have to see how they do. Beets aren't crazy about the really, really hot. So we're just gonna have to see how they do. I do see that we've got a cucumber ready to pick over here on the cucumbers. So let's get that guy picked. While I was with the cucumbers, I noticed there was a couple of little squash. We like to pick our squash small. Um, they just taste a whole lot better. Whoops, drop that guy. They just taste a whole lot better, the, a little bit small. The bigger they get, the tougher they can be, especially with the seed. And also, the bigger the seeds are. So, got a few squash. I went ahead and picked this guy. As you can see, he is abnormally shaped. And that is because he did not get pollinated correctly or we didn't get enough water at the right time to him. two asparagus beans. In this garden, I'm gonna harvest basil today. Okay, so we got quite a bit of purple basil. So my goal in harvesting the purple basil, so small, so my goal in harvesting the purple basil so small, is to prevent it from going to seed. When you get a lot of heat like we're getting now, some of your herbs will bolt or go to seed. That's what bolt means. And so if you keep, keep them pruned off, they will, that will slow that process down. So there is this purple basil here. This is a nice sized one. I did pick some that were a little smaller but basically, when you're harvesting your basil, you're gonna go down to one of these junctures where the leaves come off, and you're gonna wanna clip it right in down close. Not in the junction, but just right above the junction. That's where I clip it. And um, this one was a little just below this junction. That doesn't hurt anything either, but you don't want, if, <clears throat> that will promote the bottom whatever leaves you left on the bottom like let's pretend this is in the ground I'm gonna clip this right in here or right in here so that I have these leaves that will keep the the plant alive and keep it producing and they will sprout each one of these will be like a branch on a tree and they'll sprout and bush out and have their own top so that's why I pruned them the way I did. 
I'm kind of of the school of I would rather they would keep producing than produce seed at this point so that I can be sure to have enough basil preserved for winter. And we'll show preserving in another video. Basil. And if you guys haven't raised this purple basil, it is nice, so nice. Hopefully the wind isn't too bad this morning. But um, this purple basil came from Baker Creek and it is really nice i did start it later than usual it's usually right at i usually seed it right after our last frost i was a little behind in this garden and but it does really well i really like seeding basil between either my pepper plants or my tomato plants or both it really does well and really has benefits for both plants it's a great companion for for tomatoes and peppers purple basil and it smells divine so now we're going to go down and harvest the regular basil oh and purple basil you use just like you would italian basil sweet basil you can make pesto out of it i'm not a huge pesto fan but um you can make pesto out of it i preserve it for cooking first set of basil plants I'm a little late and they've already gone to seed. They've already bolted. And so there's seed tops there. They've got beautiful purple flowers on them. Right there. But I'm a little late and so they did go to seed. So as you can see, they seed pretty small whenever it's hot like this. So I'm gonna get after it and get them harvested. So I like to come in and snip that off. I see any of the flowers and then you just come in and you just start whacking at this stuff it is so hardy and prolific it's not gonna hurt it a bit right here we have our basil harvest this really smells like cinnamon basil i'm wondering if i didn't plant cinnamon basil but oh it smells amazing really really good really really good got a big harvest gardens and we can preserve this food to help us get through winter and kind of help keep our grocery expenses down you'd be really surprised how much you can grow in a small space so if you just have a container, grow something, grow something. Research the size of your container and what you can grow in it. How much space certain items have. You know, um, Kevin and Sarah at Living Traditions, they started out trying to replace items that they used, growing items and replacing items that they used. And it seems, if my memory serves me, one of their first things was like salsa. So they tried growing all the components that they could to make their own salsa and so that is a good good way to grow things and you need to check for your area too to see what what days mm, to see what grows best in your area and in your soil but yep today's harvest big harvest was basil and i'll come back in a week or two and these plants will bush back out and we can clip some more and we'll have most of our basil, if not all of our basil, for ourselves and maybe even to share. Thank you guys for coming along today. I pray you have a blessed day. And remember, God made you special and he loves you very much. And if you get a chance, share your harvest.